Hello everybody, welcome to another Archetype Guide. Today we're going to be talking about Seekers and their secrets. So, Travis, what are secrets and what is the goal of this archetype? Uh, secrets are something that are put on assets when they come into play as a way to denote how many times you use them. Um, the goal of this archetype is to uh, play cards that use secrets and use them a lot. <laughs> Uh, and take advantage then, of the powerful things that secrets can do. And then also, yeah. as Travis said, just keep using them. So why don't we just show you some examples of what some secret uh, secrets cards are. Oh, God, this is going to be tough. Um, <laughs> Travis, why don't you take uh, these guys? Hey, uh, we got Eldred's Office. This is a new one, from, or a new-ish one from the Ismail Conspiracy. He comes and plays now, like, cost four... One heart, three brains. None of that stuff matters, though. He uses three secrets and is a lightning bolt. You can exhaust them to move one secret or charge from an asset you control to another asset controlled by an investigator your location. Uh, this is really good because you can, if you have multiple uh, things that have secrets on them or charges, I guess, you can like move them around to, to whatever is more useful for you at the time to get more uses out of them. Mm -hmm. He also comes with three himself, so he's a bit of a battery. Yeah. Uh, we got this dying revelation here. This one uh, is myriads. So you get three copies in your deck. Can't be played. And when you're searching your decks as part of the research, it's a nice little overlap with the research. Um, yeah, the research archetype that Mandy kind of embodies. Uh, but when you search your deck and the revelation is among the search cards, you get to discard to either gain two resources or place one secret on asset you control, but you can only resolve one research ability per your search. This one is really good because uh, it's either free resources or more secrets. And both of those seem good. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly here we have the <clears throat> level 0 and level 2 versions of Truth From Fiction. Um, they provide the overlap with the Clues Matters, but like you don't have to... It's kind of a weird archetype, Clues Matters, because like you're just going to have Clues anyway. If you don't have Clues, like what are you doing? But um, it's a level zero one, only commits for two books and costs two, and then you can only play if you have a clue, or if there's a clue on your location, mm -hmm. and you get to place two secrets on asset you control. Whereas the level two version only costs one, it commits for three books, which is like a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you get to put two clue, there's no rider for a clue being on your location, but if there is a clue on location, you can put three secrets instead. It's juicy, that's a lot of secrets. That refills Eldritch Sophist, or just loads up other things too yeah again these cards just they you get more secrets to do the secret things exactly i also like how a sign revelation has one book symbol and then search from or truth from fiction is two and then other truth from fiction is oh three. It, that it is aesthetically very nice isn't it fantastic uh yeah just fantastic templating. random chance of where i put them yeah <laughs> Um, over here we got, uh, no, Brent, you like the last card, so you can take this slide. I'll take the next one. <laughs> All right. Uh, so these are assets that we have that use secrets to do things. Whoa. Uh, Mr. Rook has a lightning bolt, lets us search the top nine, well, three, six, or nine cards. But if you're not searching nine cards, you're a little cowardly baby. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And right. draw one of them. If at least one of the revealed cards is a weakness, you also have to draw that. Dang. Then you shuffle your deck. So this has some nice play with uh, the card from the previous slide, where when you find it among searched cards, you can put another secret back on, you, on your stuff, so his search can become free. Mm -hmm. uh, and just getting to take the cards out of your deck that you need right now is really strong. We've got the esoteric atlases. Atli? I don't know. Whatever the plural <laughs> for atlas is. Um, they're books. They use four secrets. You can spend a secret and exhaust them to move to a location, jumping over other locations. So you never actually occupy the intervening space. It's like extra move actions. Mm -hmm. But also you can use it to you know jump around monsters and locations that damage you and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between the level 1 and the level 2 one is that the level 2 one lets you move up to one more space. And you don't exhaust it. And you don't exhaust it. But if you need to move six spaces in a turn, like, 
what's going on? Yeah, we well, are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a little curious. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not upset or anything. I just like. I think the only time that would be relevant is if yeah. you bought it between the first and second scenario of Forgotten Age, and you needed to get out of that temple ASAP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get out right now. Yeah, yeah. Or in a, if you needed to, I don't know, maybe escape an asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it could do that too. Now uh, the last card we've got here is like the real reason we're here the <laughs> noctic manuscripts uh this one gives us three secrets as a reaction effect when an investigator at your location would perform a skill test during a revelation effect you can spend one of the secrets and they just don't have to reveal a token uh, so they you pretty much just pass three tests on revelation effects yeah and just so, uh, just imagine if there was a way to yeah. add more secrets to this yeah. card oh wait there was that entire one. last slide yeah get the gears turning a bit yeah, yeah. Uh, and then as an action we can spend a secret to choose an investigator at our location uh you do not reveal chaos tokens for the next skill test they perform this round so you can also use it to be like hey we need this combat test to succeed yeah good it just does yeah or you know like we need to could do something in the next location yeah. you can go yeah. and do that you've got uh you've got somebody playing some sort of succeed by x build you're just like cool you, you do it yeah oh baby uh, yeah you very, can do a powerful, lot of very card. fun card to play with as well you have a great time just laughing whenever you add more secrets to this card it is pretty wild dude this is my slide huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, these tough. are these are the ancient stones <laughs> um, so the first one is unidentified it costs one experience to put in your deck and you need to um, identify you do that by getting plus uh, investigating location it gets plus three shroud if you succeed you discover one additional clue uh, at your location discard ancient stone and record in your log that you've identified the stone and then note the difficulty of the test that you investigated against um, this matters because when you upgrade these cards, uh, the number of secrets on them is going to be the difficulty in which you, uh, the difficulty of the test that you passed was. So the one on Knowledge of the Elders, uh, rightmost of the unidentified one, is when you draw any number of cards, spend that many secrets, deal that much damage to an enemy at your location. That's pretty dang juicy. I have seen Travis do a lot of gross things with this card as the goon and just watching him as Mandy do better than Bryn and I combined with like unedited, un nerfed Mandy, it's gross. Yeah, you're just walking down the spider's web, gunning down spiders while you play the game normally. Yeah. It's just it just it's it's very nice. And when you can add more secrets to it, that once again means more damage when you draw more cards. Minds in Harmony, the next one over is well, as a reaction, when you draw any number of cards, spend that many secrets, heal that much horror from a card at your location. Um, and then the last one, Transient Thoughts, is when you draw any number of cards, spend that many secrets, move that many times. So the other ones are still, like, are both they like, still... Oh, sorry, you go, Travis. I was going to say, those, those the last two are just, like, both pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. They're not as juicy as the damage one, but they're they're not bad by any means. And once again... The more times you can use them because you add more secrets onto things, the better. Mm -hmm. Travis, why don't you take these guys? Hey, uh, Otherworldly Codex. This is a weird one where you get to exhaust it and spend a secret to search the top nine cards in the deck and choose a non-elite card among them. It doesn't have to be a monster, just like a non-elite card. And then you discard a copy of the chosen card from play and shuffle all of the, the rest of the search cards back into the deck, including the one you picked. So this one is like if there's a, a medium-sized monster who's hassling you or, like, a treachery in play, this one's especially relevant against um, some of the treacheries that count up to three in um, the Circle Undone cycle. You can just get one out of there. To find cards, like, a little bit more niche in its use than some of the other ones, but it does its job. Next one is the Cryptographic Cipher. This is a new card from the Inspired Conspiracy, which... Uh, I had to read this one like two or three times to understand it. So <laughs> as a lightning bolt, you can exhaust it and spend a secret to investigate. Your location gets plus one shroud for this investigation. Or you, as an action, you can exhaust it and spend one secret to investigate. And your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. 
So if you're like me, the first time you read this, you were like, wait, why would I be spending secrets to increase the shroud, but also to get rid of the shroud? Why would I ever do the top ones? Because the top one's a light bolt. So you basically get to investigate an extra time, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but it does only have three secrets, so... It's a really nice uh, starting card for your deck until you can get to some of the juicier stuff. Or does it? <laughs> and then... Put extra secrets on it. Yeah, speaking of juicier stuff... On it, yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of juicy things, uh, this is the Necronomicon. It's got a massive five book symbols on it so much that it starts to bleed into the text box. You're allowed to play one copy per deck cost five experience and it has comes play with six secrets which is like a lot more than the other ones and then as a lightning bolt you can either spend one secret to get plus two skill value through the skill test or spend two secrets to draw two cards or spend three secrets to discover one clue at any location or spend four secrets to deal three damage and engage with you obviously like it's really good if you have some way to reset the secrets or to put more secrets on and then something else to note is unlike a lot of these cards, it doesn't exhaust to use any of these abilities. So you can just, you play it, you just draw six cards, man. You play it and you just discover two clues from a location. Play it, just get like plus two skill value for your next six tests. Um, play it, draw two cards and kill whatever is engaged with you. Like it, it does actually everything. This is can, like... The possibilities aren't endless, but... <laughs> They may as well be. Yeah. It, it, this card's just absolutely freaking disgusting, and I can't believe they printed it. I also, like, I, it should have exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. So at least you can only play one. Which is definitely a problem for books. You can't just find books for free. Yeah, you can't, you can't just, yeah. If only Seekers <laughs> could search their deck, it'd be easier to find. <laughs> Speaking no, of searching your uh, deck, here is for the <laughs> what's his face um, for the Joe Diamond deck. So you can play the well prepared and just walk around with plus five book. He's like, hey, oh my god, <laughs> just I'll investigate with nine. The actual I'm, senior looks at him jealously. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, like one of the one of the best parts about that is that that's one of the fair things you can do with it. Mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Uh, so this archetype, uh, in Travis's notes, he actually didn't have any synergies written down, and I spent a good time thinking about it, but this archetype, like, doesn't really synergize too much with other archetypes. Like, there is a little yeah, bit I of research stuff, right? Ones, but... Sorry, Travis? I got lazy on some of the later ones. Hmm. <laughs> Um, like with the research, there is a little bit of cr like cross thing with the astounding revelation, but a lot of um, research stuff. You're going to be using that for resources, anyways, or or just honestly, Mr. Rook is so good that the astounding revelation just refills Mr. Rook. Um, however, this one goes really good with card drawn search because if you have the Necronomicon in your deck, there's only one you want to be able to find it, and cards that search and or cards that draw cards will make it more likely for you to come across it. If only there was a card you could play that would just like draw the Necronomicon from your deck. If only, yeah. if only. Speaking yeah. of, why don't we go and Travis, you can talk about the deck list for this one. Yeah, so this one, instead of just making a super boring deck, I tried to make like a neat uh, toolboxy deck, sort of like a tutor deck, uh, where you got your, I also didn't. I, I picked Daisy for this because she's the best with tomes, and tomes are really fun for toolboxing. Um, speaking of that card that can just pull Necronomicon out of your deck, Research Librarian is what really makes this deck tick. Mm -hmm. Where when you, you come to play, you search your deck for Tome Asset and add to your hand. So you can use this to pull out your one of Necronomicon, or your Noptic Manuscripts, or your Otherworldly Codex, or Old Book of Lore, or your Encyclopedia if you have needed the other three. Um, it is then playing Miskatonic Archaeology funding to be able to support Dr. Molan for Economy and Eldritch Sophist to continue, so you can continually use the Necronomicon or the, the manuscripts or like your other two if you choose. And Witten Green as well, where she can uh, buff your stats to a nice four and six and then help, again, help you dig out those tomes and relics. And also just like trigger your astounding revelations. Mm -hmm. she's another option for that as well um so you got encyclopedia here as like your general all-purpose uh support tome 
Uh, Playing the level zero one because, man, you're not going to need more than five. But also, it's important that you play the level zero one because it actually has secrets on it, so you can use your Elder Sophist to move those secrets to the Necronomicon or the Noptic Manuscripts if you choose. Um, next up, we got uh, the old Book of Lore, which is like Daisy's kind of bread and butter. Whereas if there's nothing else that you could do with your free tome action, this one is like, why not? Right? Yeah. Just Unless your teammate draws like three weaknesses, then like, and even if they do, like, what can you do, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Otherworldly Codex it can be nice to try and find a an answer to like a top enemy. Uh, or, like, a problematic treachery for, like, your goon who's on the other side of the map or something like that. If they're getting weighed down by a frozen fear. Noptic Manuscripts is there because passing tests is really, really good. And then for everything else, there's a Necronomicon. <laughs> uh, the rest of the events are just, like, economy. Uh, more secrets and the truth from fictions. And knowledge is power. Which is like particularly strong with Noptic manuscripts as a one of shot or the Necronomicon where you can just dome something for three. And then uh, Promise Power is there to bail you out of like really nasty, nasty treacheries. Yep. Um, and the Enraptured is it puts a secret on one of your cards, which is what the deck does. Yeah, and it commits for a book, so it's super easy to just put that into a test while investigating and just get an extra secret out of it. One other choice you can make this deck is instead of the Eldritch Sophist, you could play Library Docent, which is a car. It's a one cost ally that soaks one heart and two brain, I believe, from the Harvey Walters deck. And when it comes in play, you return a tome in play to your hand. And then you can play a different tome from your hand, reducing its cost by X, where X was the cost of the one you returned. Seems like you can do um, a lot of gross things with the Necronomicon with that, Travis. Yeah, imagine that. But I think that when this came out, Elder's Office was, like, newly revealed, and I wanted to make a deck to feature it. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. I think Elder's Office is better for the staying hard onto the Seeker archetype, or the Secrets archetype, which we try to do with these videos. Yeah. Sick. Uh, I think the deck looks great. I love, I love any Daisy deck or any deck where you get to use the old book of lore to find things. It's a great freaking time, so... I think this deck would be a blast to play, and it looks like there's a lot of experience, uh, and there's a good chunk, but I mean, like... It's actually only 27. That's very doable. It's very doable. Especially yeah, like with someone who's... slightly more than you expect to get from Dunwich. Yeah. Especially I with someone who's, like, like uh, Daisy, who's, like, great. You bring some deductions in as well to make sure you're staying at pace with the game, and you'll clear out locations to get experience to buy these fun, exciting cards, no problem. Yeah, like, you could always shave on, like, not upgrading your old Book of Lore or not upgrading your Truth from Fictions. Yeah, exactly. Well. So. Sick. Yeah, and you do have access to purple cards, so you could play Delve Too Deep to help you fund this in, uh, in the early stages of the game. Honestly, well, that's something that, that you should. I just, yeah, I I'm exactly that. I support, if you have purple in your colors, play Delve Too Deep uh, early on and just... If you ever have a choice at the last game, at the last part of the game, delve too deep, baby. Go as deep as you can. So next week we are on to Mystics, and I have heard a lot of people say so. Next week is going to be Doom Matters for the Mystic archetype. So get ready for that next week. Then after that we got Rogues and Survivors again. Then we're going back to the top. Let us know what you want to see in those archetypes and future archetype videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, and as always, GGS.